So I'm a father of what? I gotta find a babysitter. I found care.com and I was blown away. Through the platform, I was able to find local and experienced candidates along with their reviews and rates, which were way more affordable than I anticipated. Care.com really put me at ease knowing that they were all required to go through a background check. If you're like me and you need to find someone reliable for your child care necessities, check out care.com. Find the ideal sitters for your child care needs. <music> Welcome to the PowerCat Podcast, GoPowerCat.com's Kansas State Athletics Show. Make sure you're subscribing to our show at Apple, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, from the GPC studios, here's your host, GoPowerCat publisher, Tim Fitzgerald. Welcome to another edition of the PowerCat Postgame Review Podcast. I'm Go PowerCat publisher Tim Fitzgerald here in the GPC studios in Manhattan, Kansas. And joining us is Brian Hanley, our football analyst based out of Texas. And of course, we are sponsored by Caddyshack Golf. Caddyshack Golf, where Caddy with two T's. Visit CaddyshackGolf.com for all of your officially licensed golfing Willie apparel, accessories, and more. Use code GPC for free shipping on your next order. Sunflower Showdown once again was a Sunflower Mowdown as Kansas State just flattened Kansas 35-10. to 10. The game wasn't that close. This was kind of a mismatch from the very start. And if you want to credit Kansas for one thing, they seemed to slow down the tempo of the game enough where K-State didn't have a lot of possessions during which to score. So it kind of kept the score down. So congratulations on not getting beat too badly, Kansas. Tim (laughs) Fitzgerald and Brian Hanley, your pair that always breaks down the Cats' wins and losses in very fair ways. We like to back up and take a look at things and analyze it. And Brian, was K-State... Very good on Saturday, or was Kansas just awful? It was both. It was both. K K State was really good. You know, it's tough as a kid. It's tough to play football when you're better than somebody. You're dominating them. It's tough to keep that intensity level during the game. You know, it, it just is. And I thought that they were really good when they needed to be really good. And then we just kind of went through the motions because they're like, they can't do anything. Right. Kansas is bad. I think they can get better, but they're, they're, they're bad. Um, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. But K-State did what they needed to do. K-State, they, they played well. They, they just did what they were supposed to do. They played well. Yep, it was uh, a game that really was not never in doubt. As soon as K-State got the ball, they went down and scored, and they led 21-3 to at halftime. It, it was just kind of a strange game. It, it never felt like there was much tension in the contest, unless you want to talk about a late hit. But uh, right. uh, I just think Kansas State has settled in to – an identity on both sides of the ball. It took them a while to get there. And I don't know that this, these were necessarily the identities the coaches intended at the start of the year, but here we are offensively. They are a pass more often than throw offense, which is surprising because Skylar Thompson has advanced so much. And I can remember a number of his misses on the day in, in the passing game, a couple of them looked like they were going to go for touchdowns. And yet he was 19 of 24 for 244 yards. He kind of puts up these 75% completion rates to 80% completion rates. Now on a common basis, Brian Hanley, how good has Skylar Thompson gotten for this offense? He's good. He's been good. He's getting the ball out. The line is protecting and you know, the receivers are playing better. You know, I think just the overall passing game is better. Now, it, it obviously it helps when you have a quarterback throw and putting the ball where they need to be, but I think the guys have gotten better around them. But there's no question, Skylar Thompson is playing lights out football. Fitz. I mean, he just is. He's just playing lights out football. And, and the thing about it is, and I know we'll talk about it, maybe they haven't played the, the caliber of teams that they played early, but it doesn't matter. 
I mean, it, it, it doesn't matter who we're playing. If you're going to throw the ball and play like this, you're going to beat a lot of teams, you know, and, and play really well. And they're playing very well. So more power to them. I'm, I'm happy to see it. You know, you bring up a really good point. I, I always say this when they play a team like Southern Illinois, an FCS team that clearly doesn't have as much talent as a Power 5 team. But what they do have is confidence and a self-identity and an understanding how to win games and a belief that they're going to win games. And and I think Kansas State is starting to arrive at that, even though, as we now look at it, we probably have seen the 8th, ninth, and best teams and 10th best teams in this conference. TCU kind of shook that up yesterday. But um, it it does help me believe that this team has built some confidence in beating lesser teams, and now they're much better prepared for this stretch. That self-belief goes a long ways, and Chris Kleiman keeps talking about it. He's right. It goes a long way, you know, and, and winning a football game, that game that they won at Tech was the difference is we got behind early. It couldn't literally couldn't have started worse, but they fought and fought and fought and ended up winning. And that has literally just snowballed and confidence is key, especially when you're dealing with, you know, 18 to 22 year old kids, uh, you know, it's the college game is a lot based on confidence and when you can get it going and the guy's got it going right now, you're going to be able to do a lot of different things. Practice is better. You know, that's an aspect that people don't realize when you have your confidence going, practice is great. It's Chris, it's quick. You know, you get in and out of practice quick. It's just a lot of different things happen for a football team when you're confident and you're winning. So it's good to see the guys are playing well. Uh, and I'm excited for this stretch run. Yeah, I am too. It's going to tell us a lot about the state of the program. And one of the things that K-State did really well on Saturday was use Deuce Vaughn both both as a receiver, which they've been doing, and a running back. Um, He was targeted eight times in the passing game. He caught six for 70 yards. Um, His long was 23. He only ran the ball 11 times. Brian, I was a little surprised to see that because it felt like he touched the ball uh, in the running game a lot more than that. He Went for 162, had no loss yardage in the game, scored three TDs, and of course had the spectacular 80-yard run that was well blocked, but he also did an incredible job of getting to the edge. As soon as he got that edge um, and got past that one tackler that didn't seal the edge, I'm like, he's, he might be gone. If he makes yep. one person miss, he might be gone, and he read a great block by Keenan Garber. By the way, that's something Deuce Vaughn does so well. He, yes, he does. He just plots out those blocks ahead of him and understands that I don't need that guy to knock him on the butt. I need that guy just to be in the way. Yep. And that's exactly what he, he set up his blocker to be successful and went for a touchdown. Yeah, well, it's just football sense, you know, and you can tell that his dad was a scout and has been around football and in, in return, Deuce has been around football his entire life. You can just tell because the guy is a smart football player and that's what it takes, you know, again, with a guy that's his size to be able to play the way that he plays, you have to be smart. You can't run through everybody. So you have to be able to see what's coming, where it's coming, how you can get around. And he's been doing that his whole life because he's been small his whole life. So you have to figure out a way to be successful. He's figured that out. It's it's great. He's just great. He's just a great running back, man. And it's amazing. You you don't really appreciate how small he is until you see him. And he's standing around with a bunch of reporters. Now, I mean small in height. He is a, a thick young man for his size. Right. He's standing around with a bunch of reporters, and he literally looks like he's he's being interviewed after a junior high science project. I mean, he's just... <laughs> Everyone dwarfs him. Even the female reporters are are kind of dwarfing him. It's just incredible how how small he is in terms of stature, but how incredibly humble he is for a guy that's being as successful as he is. And I'm just going to say, you mentioned his dad taught him to be a good football player. His parents taught him a lot of things about life that are going to make him successful off the football field. But Joe Irvin ran for almost seven yards a carry and nine carries for 60 yards. Everything K-State did in the running game seemed to work. And once in a while they'd throw it and that would work too. Just the K defense is awful, Brian. I, I, I really feel like K-State, if they wanted to open it up and do some damage, could have scored a lot of points in this game. But Chris Kleiman just doesn't have that in him. And I don't know if that's good or bad, but uh, he wasn't going to make an enemy on this day by 
completely embarrassing Lance Leipold in his, his opening season at KU. Well, you know, and there's something to be said for that. But also, there's also something to be said to put your foot on somebody and just say, look, I know you're just getting started, but you got a long way to go before you get to this level. And there's nothing wrong with that. And whether you want to make an enemy or not, they're a built-in enemy that's our rival. So who cares whether he's mad or not mad? I mean, it's just, look, like I said, there's something to be said for not wanting to do that because they could have. And I think when we got to a certain point, hey, let's just get out of this game healthy and get to the next game and do what we need to do. But at the same time, I think, you know, there's nothing wrong with putting your foot on somebody and squashing them like a bug. There's nothing wrong with that because on the flip side, and I'm not trying to change the subject, but if it was the other way around when it's KU basketball against K-State, they will put their foot on our neck if they need to. And, and they won't even think twice about it. We And that's a philosophy that, in my opinion, we should have right when you're able to do that again. I'm not talking about against teams that are inferior, like, like a Southern Illinois or somebody, a conference opponent, your rival, you bury them every opportunity you get. So they don't even think that they can beat you. Just my opinion. Well, that's, it's a very interesting take. And, um, you, you know, I, I watched KU play yesterday and I'm like, they don't have good football players. I don't care no, what the no. recruiting rankings were. I don't care what they came in as. No. I, I don't know if they're in a position to turn this ship around anytime too soon because here's my fear for if I'm a KU person. First of all, let me just say this. The transfer portal is a gift and it's a danger. The transfer yep. portal can help a program like K-State tremendously in the fact that K-State – frankly, isn't recruiting at a real high level right now. They just lost another kid to Stanford over the end of the week there. and But the portal has enabled them to go find guys that were clearly overlooked on the recruiting trail once and then supplement them into the K-State program. Now, they have taken some guys from programs like Iowa and Louisville, but they also have important guys on this team from Charlotte and the FCS level. And yep. um, it, it, you can go find help and, and get help. Now, I think Gary Patterson was beating his chest over this. He's worried about some of these programs constantly being the farm for the SEC or whatever. And as soon as a player breaks through, they get an offer through sources that they can go someplace. And I think KU's in that position. A running back like Devin Neal. What happens? The kid's from Lawrence. He's a great kid from all accounts. Wanted to be at KU. But what if through back channels he hears the SEC, an SEC school wants him, and uh, he could be the starter there? It's just going to get I, really tough on Kansas. It is. But you know what? Fitz, be better. Be be that's all I can say is be better. This is big-time college athletics. Clearly there's money involved, but I don't want to get into that part of it. It's you have to just be better. It's K-State did it. And now it was a different landscape, so I will admit, totally different landscape, but I don't care. K-State came from underneath the ground to be a top football program. It can be done if you do it the right way. The transfer portal helps if you use it the right way. I mean, we have to change with the times. It's basically a new recruiting tool that you have to to use to your benefit again yes you're going to lose some guys you're but you're also going to be able to get some guys but that means you just have to be a better recruiter you just have to be better there is no ifs ands or buts i mean it's not you know uh, I, i'm under the belief that there's no participation trophies in anything either you get it done or you don't and if you do Great. If you don't, you don't. Things change. And this is something that has changed. I know a lot of people think that the rich are going to get richer, and they will. They do. That's how it works. But that doesn't mean that your program has to fall by the wayside. It's just what you said. You can get help from anywhere to help your program. I mean, and my philosophy thing is, well, what would you rather have? Would you rather bring in a guy that a plug and play guy from a Juco or a plug and play guy that's played three years at Louisville or three years at Marshall or Charlotte? Of course you would want that kid. So it's just, that's just me. I think it's a great thing. I think K, K State, I think, uses, I mean, again, you're going to lose some guys 
that's just the nature of the business because the business has changed. So you have to change with it. And if you don't, you're going to get left behind. So that's the whole thing is you have to change because it's not going anywhere. It literally isn't. It's not going to go anywhere. So if you don't change, it's going to be a problem. You know, one thing that has changed <clears throat> is people are so impatient now. They, they oh, yeah. just demand results immediately. You know, I, I had someone text me, I don't see that light bulb's making much progress at Kansas. I'm like, dude, he, he's been there like four or five months or whatever it is. Right. I mean, he didn't even have spring practice, for heaven's sakes. Uh, right. I, I don't know that you could expect anything more. In fact, I think they should take their one win, almost like K-State did in 89, and say, job well done. We didn't think that yeah. could happen this season after a, such a late change in coaches. But yeah. people fail to remember that Bill Snyder showed progress in year two and three, but it wasn't really to the fifth year that he saw the breakthrough with a bowl game. In right. fact, in year four, they kind of took a step back and had a losing season. And, and it almost strikes me now that it's so hard to get to year four. People were wanting Chris Kleiman out this year because he might go five and seven. It's they just people aren't patient enough to let something set in and work. And and one of the things I watched Bill Snyder do is he always tried to recruit to get a little bit better. Now, I know that sounds obvious, but he didn't sit there and say, we're the University of Kansas, like Lance Leipold might, and we need to go find four- and five-star kids. He went out right. and said, I'm going to improve at linebacker. I'm going to recruit over the top of this guy and go find someone better. And they may not be all Big 12 material, but they get you better. And, they, and right. slowly, Bill Snyder built K-State with better and better players until when you came around, he was recruiting players that could compete with anyone at any level, anywhere in the college game. And it took 10-plus years to get it done. It takes a long time. Yeah. Well, the thing about it is, and, you know, I, I'm a fan. I, and I'm, Like I said, I'm from Louisville, so I've been a fan of Louisville. And they're going through that literally right now. They got a new coach, and now they have some other issues. But people are wanting the guy fired, and he hasn't even been there in three years. And I'm like, first of all, their program wasn't in shambles. I go, but it needed some some repair. You got to give somebody at least a chance to get the players to run their system in. I go because if you're if you don't give them that opportunity, then why do you hire them? To begin with, and it's just like you said, there's just no patience. And, you know, and Coach Kleiman is doing a great job. He didn't need, I mean, even if we would have had a losing season this year, he didn't need to be replaced. Not that he was going to anyway, but he didn't need to be replaced. Now, maybe he needed to shake up some things on the, on the staff, you know, and you can do that. And I'm not saying they still don't do, need to do that because you can always get better. You always need to keep getting better. But as far as just churning things oh that's i mean ku has done that i mean they got rid of mangino and they have been horrible ever since not bad they have been horrible since they manufactured a way to get the guy out of there well that's that's what happens i mean you can go down the list tennessee nebraska texas i mean there's Plenty of these schools that think that they're better than what they are. They get rid of coaches and then just have been terrible. But KU takes the cake. I mean, they have just been, I mean, I, I don't even know what you would call them. I mean, it's just been horrible. And you got to give somebody the opportunity to fix it and do it their way. But three years isn't long enough. You can't. I mean, you can't. No. Now, granted, now if you're coming from a five and six team or something like that, and you get rid of the coach, and then you win two games, you know, over three years, that's something different. But KU's awful. You know, let them build the program. Well, you know, give them some time. And, yeah. and but I don't think they will, though. No. I, I literally don't. I don't think they'll get, they're going to do that. No, they won't. They won't. And that's the thing. I look at Lance Leipold, and I see a a guy who's had a track record of success, and a guy yeah. who's also had a track record of. Um, doing things eth ethically the right way for the most part. I don't like what he did with Buffalo and taking so many guys out of the transfer portal. Uh, right. When, you know, he kind of recruited his old players, and I, that's a little bit tacky. But if he's doing things the right way and you're seeing progress in terms of improvement in recruiting and on, you know, Saturdays, the play is getting better, you got to give him five years. And I just don't yeah. see how they're going to give him five years if at the end of year three, maybe he's three and nine. Right. But, folks, that's a lot of progress. Yeah, it is. I mean, 
that's that's going the right way and we're just yeah, not patient is. anymore we're just absolutely not patient and we also absolutely just don't recognize that once in a while the ball bounces the wrong way and you might lose a game you should win and yeah. Um, then you want to fire a coach. I don't. I don't know. I'm, I got into KU a little bit there, but I, I see some comparisons to what I've experienced at Kansas State because the team I saw Saturday. I've always told people KU is so much better off now than what K State was in 1989. Um, well, and it is very true. But on Saturday, I saw a talent deficit so shocking that. Um, I, I don't know what KU is going to do. I, I don't know how they're going to retain decent players when any other better opportunity comes along because they will with the transfer portal. Yeah, it's it's going to be a challenge, you know, but again, you got to dig yourself out of it. Just dig yourself out of it. You know, you're here. This is what you're, what, what you're at. Just go dig yourself out of it. I mean, um, obviously you got to do things ethically. So, the, the, I mean, that kind of goes without saying, but you know, they, they can figure it out. Look, if K state could figure it out, it's kind of what you said. If K state could figure it out, I know the landscape is different, but is it that much different? Because yeah, people can transfer away from KU. Well, nobody even wanted to go to K state to begin with. So it's kind of the same type of deal. So you can figure it out. It's just, how do you do that? You got to dig and you got to find it. You got to recruit. They'll, I mean, maybe they'll figure it out. Maybe they won't. I don't know. It's to be honest with you, it's not our problem. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> really good stuff, Brian. Let's put a pause right here as we take a break on this edition of the PowerCat Post Game Review Podcast. Kansas State beats Kansas thirty-five to ten on Saturday in Lawrence. Onward and upward for the Wildcats. Something we'll discuss right after this. GoPowerCat.com's PowerCat Podcast continues after this short break. Is your January looking dry? Get some lotion, get a humidifier, and better yet, get Drizzly, the go-to app for drink delivery. With Drizzly, you can compare prices across local stores to get the best price on a huge selection of drinks perfect for dry January. Every single time. Non-alcoholic wines? Have a look. Ready-made mocktails? Grab a straw and order them up. Beer without the alcohol? <laughs> yep, take your pick. You can find all of them here, in the app, in that phone that's in your hand. Could it be any simpler? Nope, not a chance. So shop for great deals on all your dry January beverages or other drinks and get them delivered to your door or blanket fort, maybe. Download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com. Must be 21 plus, not available in all locations. And don't forget to lotion up your elbows. They're looking a little dry. If you're in the market for investment-worthy bags, watches, and fine jewelry, Rebag is the answer. Rebag is a luxury resale marketplace where each piece is carefully vetted and verified by experts to ensure quality and authenticity. If you're in the market, use Rebag to buy and sell finds from the world's top brands, including Hermes, Chanel, and Cartier. Head to Rebag.com to get 10% off your first purchase with code REBAG10. Shop today at Rebag.com. That's R-E-B-A-G.com. And use promo code REBAG10 for 10% off your first purchase. Purchase. Welcome back to the Power Cat Podcast. Now, let's return to the GPC Studios. Welcome back to the Power Cat Post Game Review Podcast. Tim Fitzgerald of GoPowerCat.com and our football analyst, Brian Hanley, here discussing K State's 35 to 10 victory over Kansas on Saturday, but mostly pivoting now and looking forward to the Cats as they face down the final three games of the regular season and what will take place. We are sponsored by Caddyshack Golf. From the golf course to the tailgate, show your purple pride all week long. Caddyshack Golf, wear caddy with two T's. Visit CaddyshackGolf.com. Use code GPC for free shipping on your next order. I know this is meant to break down the previous game, but I don't think there's anything in depth to break down about this game. K-State was a lot better than KU. K-State could have won by more. They didn't. It wasn't a sign of poor play. It was just a sign of how the game unveiled itself. And and I just thought K-State looked efficient, except in special teams, oddly enough. And uh, I thought the Wildcats did a nice job, but they are going to face three really interesting challenges to finish off the season. And that's where I want to go with the remainder of this episode. Um, West Virginia, Baylor, and Texas, all are very comparable to K-State. 
with one glaring exception being that those three schools lost on Saturday and sometimes in surprising fashions. But I think these are going to be the ultimate test for Kansas State because I think by season's end, this might be the fourth best team in the Big 12. Your thoughts? Well, um, I really think, and this is not me being a homer, I think K-State can win these games. As a matter of fact, I expect K-State to win these games because with the confidence level that we've gotten over the last week and the way that we can execute both on offense and defense, and we know our special teams when we need it, we're going to have it. I just believe that it's going to be I, – I, I think this is something that we can do. I, not that we can do, that we're going to do. I, I, I just firmly believe that, Fitz, that we have turned that corner. You know, and again, it's kind of what you mentioned before, and I know we've talked about it. If we're wanting to go to where we want to go, where we want to go as a program, these are three, th- three games that we need to win. And I just believe that the guys are good enough – I believe they're tough enough. I think the coaching staff has figured out what works and what doesn't work and can put us in the position to make the plays necessary because these are going to be three challenging games. I mean, these aren't going to be blowouts. I mean, they're going to be tough. West Virginia's defense is tough. My goodness, they're tough. And so it's, we're just going to have to figure it out, but I think we will. I think we got the, the I think we got over the hump of the self doubt. You know, and when we get into adversity, I think that Texas Tech game is really going to go a long way. I just do. I cannot figure out West Virginia for the life of me. They they look so good on some Saturdays, and then they have a day like yesterday where they give up a lot of points to Oklahoma State, and they absolutely cannot score. Their quarterback was sacked eight times in the course of the game, which uh, probably has King Felix salivating. Uh, and, and I really think that's a key here is K-State has to continue to use this defense in the manner in which it has. It has yep. really carved out a nice, very conservative approach on first and second down in which they just really want to hold that line of scrimmage and get enough pass rush so the quarterback can't you know, sit there with the ball in his hands. And then on third down or in second and long, they bring in that pass rush group and they just attack the line. And I, I think it's working for K-State. And other than a few plays they gave up to the Jayhawks on Saturday in which, you know, they led to the 10 points for KU, I thought the defense was just so sound. And, oh, my God, Daniel Green, quit hurting people. He <laughs> he took out two quarterbacks on Saturday with nothing dirty, Ooh. just – absolutely playing football at a high level, but this defense is beginning to get that sense of itself, this belief in itself. And yep. if you're a defender and you're taking uh, the the field with any other approach, then I'm going to tear your head off and take the ball from you. You're probably yep. not going to be as successful as you need to be. That's exactly right. And K-State has figured it out on what they are doing on the defense. But not that they didn't know, but I think just the coaches have, have, have figured out this is what we do best and we're just going to do it. We're not going to try to make, a, you know, and, and get fancy with stuff. This is what we need to do. This is what we're going to, how we need to do it and just play fast. And that's what I'm seeing is the guys are playing fast, you know, and you know, when the game is slowed down for people is when guys are playing fast and not having to go here and run there and do that kind of stuff and think about it. They're just going and reacting. And I love it because that's how defense needs to play. That's how defense needs to play to be successful. You just need to be able to to know where you're supposed to be and just go do it. That's it. And not have to think and, and settle and read too much. Because if you do that, you're on your heels. In defense, you cannot be on your heels and play good defense. It's literally impossible to do. So with this intact mode that we've been in the last three games, and even in the other games, I know we gave up yards and we didn't win the games and gave up points, you know, but at least they were doing a little bit of something here or there you know they're fighting and that's the whole thing they were fighting and now they figured it out and the defense is something to be reckoned with it really is i'm telling you brian hanley if your offensive line doesn't get to the second level and disrupt daniel green in some way he he is going to run downhill and attack your ball carrier and quite often just finish off the tackle he's not like a guy that runs really fast and then misses the tackle he rarely misses a tackle this kid finishes people off he he is playing at Josh Buell levels, and I don't say that with a light comparison. I'm really impressed with how he's grown as a linebacker. 
playing fast, playing downhill, hitting people. I mean, it's literally he's playing textbook of what you want your linebacker to play like. Just running downhill and smacking people when he gets there. You know, it's just physical football, if you can't tell. I love physical football. <laughs> and he play. he is the definition of physical football. Just running hitting people, you know, getting there with bad intentions. And that's what you want your linebacker to do. Get to where he's supposed to get there fast and have bad intentions when you get there. Kids playing great. Yeah, it's been it's so impressive. And you know what we noticed Saturday after post game uh we were talking, he came out, uh he was one of the players that spoke on behalf of the team. We had a number of players. But he's he's so confident in himself, and and that has translated to how he handles the media. He's so much more confident in his answers because I think he truly understands what he's supposed to be doing and what he is doing, what is not going right and what needs to be fixed. He's starting to get that kind of you know 10,000 foot view of the defense instead of just being here's what I do he's beginning to understand all the pieces and that's really fun growth to watch because I think this kid is clearly one of the players on the defense who's NFL caliber along with you know a couple other guys that I I think K-State finally is finding defenders that can play at the next level yep that's the key I mean, when you play this level of football, you know, everybody's not going to be a pro, obviously, but you need some to be competitive. You just absolutely have to have some to be competitive at this level of football. And K-State has found a few, which is good, you know, because we couldn't always say that in the last few years. We couldn't always say that, that we had, you know, guys, and not just guys that are going to be on a practice squad for a while. We have guys that are going to be in the NFL for a while playing competitive downs that are going, you know, that they're going to be talking about for a while, you know, and that's what you literally have to have to compete at a high, high level, which we're competing at, you know, of college football. It's a, it's a necessity. It literally is. It's a necessity. You have to have pros. And we got a few. That's good to say. That's a good thing. You know, you're never going to be, you can never have enough. Don't get me wrong. You can never have enough, but you can't have too little. And that can be a problem. So you, as long as you have some, you know, we're, we're doing the right things. It's good to see that, though. I like it. I know a lot of people don't like the, hey, we just want to be a K-State thing. And I do, too. Don't get me wrong. But you have to have guys that are capable of playing on Sundays for a long time to be able to compete at a high level. You just have to have those guys. Well, Coach Snyder did a marvelous job of going to find Sunday players and meshing them in with the kids that that are from Kansas that will never play on Sundays, but they have a sense of uh, commitment to winning at Kansas State. It just mystifies me how Kansas has gone through a few coaches that just didn't truly believe that recruiting Kansas was important, that there's not enough good players because K-State is is down the road, just not too far, and they've proven that notion completely wrong. I don't understand it at all. There are good players in Kansas that can help you or the metro area if you want to include someone like Skylar Thompson or Felix Anyaduke Uzama because that kid is from Lee Summit, was 220 pounds. He's the perfect kid for K-State. Hey, come to K-State. We'll give you time to put on weight, and maybe you'll turn into something, and boy, has he. And that's just what you do at K-State. You go find the kids that can help you. But Daniel Green, Portland, Oregon, four-star guy, was a significant recruit. How did K-State yep. get him? He had great issues. They were patient with him. He got eligible. He made it to Manhattan. Again, they recruited over the guys they had because they had two really good linebackers last year that were seniors, and Daniel played enough to know that he's getting there. And now that he's been asked to take charge, oh boy, is he taking charge? And that's exactly yeah. how you build a program. The, the exactly. People think, well, and I'm one of those. Look, I'm old school when it comes to recruiting. You have to recruit your state first. It, basically, you go from your campus out. Now, obviously, Kansas is not going to have uh, you know a hundred four and five star people, but you don't have to. I mean, I'm living proof and saw it firsthand. There's plenty of guys that can't that you get. You just get all the good ones, as many good ones as you, as you can, bring them to your campus, and you you bring them in. And, and like you said, they get around and they filter in and they form together with everybody else. I mean, it was it, it was crazy for me to see that because you know coming from the outside. I mean, I'm from Jeffersonville, Indiana, you know, and I I would see it. I'm like, man, how is this guy? 
best friends, a guy from Miami, Florida is best friends with a guy from, you know, Kansas, you know, in the middle of Kansas, you know, Clay Center, Kansas. I'm like, you wouldn't even think they would even talk to each other. And yet they're best friends and live together. It's just what you have to do, man. And at, at a place like K-State, it's just one of those things you have to do. But there are, you're right. There are plenty of players that you can get. I'm not saying you're going to fill your entire roster up with them, but there are plenty of players that can help your program. And everybody does it. I mean, Oklahoma recruits Oklahoma. Do you think they get all their players from everywhere else? No, they don't. I'm like, you have to do that. I mean, you know, it's it's impossible to get people from all these other places all the time to fill out your roster. K-State does a great job. I don't know why KU does it, but again, like I said earlier, it's, it's crazy. not really my problem. Because <laughs> it does literally look like a program that is going to go, going to find the superstars, but they, you know, because they do have some good players. I, I don't know that they have as many as they've had in the past, but then they have nothing to fill around them. So the offensive Correct. line stinks. Four out of five right. Kansas State's offensive of linemen, starting offensive linemen, are Kansas products. Yep. I, and yep. these guys, these guys, a couple of them are probably Sunday players in Revis and Beaver. Correct. So Correct. I, I don't quite understand why you're at least not recruiting offensive linemen at a great number instead of some of the reaches. They've recruited some offensive linemen out of Kansas. You look at it and you go, I, I, okay, I don't. I, is that like a an offer just to make an offer? It's just very strange. Now the next step for Kansas State is to protect the borders better, and I think we all recognize that there's too much bleed off of talent, and honestly, sometimes they've gotten too picky. Brees Hall wasn't a good enough running back. Maybe he can play linebacker for us. Really. Uh, you know, yeah. there's a kid at Iowa that we don't know if he's good enough for us. And Arlen Bruce is a, now a significant receiver for the Hawkeyes. So right. you got to stop this kind of over evaluating Kansas kids and putting them up against. Here's my thing. You can go find a more physically advanced kid in Texas or Florida right now than your typical kid in Kansas just because of the rules of the state. But boy, if you Correct. stick at home, you can go find those guys and still find those other guys. Uh, it it should yeah. be one or the other. You should just be really evaluating all of them. Yeah. I don't even yeah. know if that I makes mean, sense. It, it makes perfect sense. And you can absolutely do that. It's, it's literally recruiting 101. Is you have to get the kids inside your state. You have to do that first before you go anywhere else. You just have to because – like you said, there might not be a million guys out there, but you know what? When the one guy comes along that is great, where do you want him to go? Do you want him to look at you? Because you, you not only do you take a lot of kids from Kansas, the kids that do come from Kansas end up being really good football players. So you, you have to do that and you have to be able to develop. You know, and if you can't develop, then what are you doing as a coach anyway? That's kind of goes without saying. Yeah. But uh, you know, the whole recruiting game it, it changes all the time. You have to start from your can- from your campus and work your way out. And again, you'll find those other guys in Texas and Florida and all that stuff. You will, but you also have to have a core where you get certain players and certain things from. You just have to yeah. you have to have that you know that that base of we're going to get defensive ends and defensive tackles from here and offensive linemen from here. And we're going to do that because then when you can get the, another position from that area, to somebody that's really, really good. It's a lot easier to do that, but got to build those pipelines. And right. you're right. we got to, the KC got to get, got to start owning Kansas city again. That, that's, that's one thing. They got to start owning Kansas city and Wichita. And I think we're on our way to doing that. So as long as we can start to do that and build it from there, we'll be okay. We'll be fine. I agree. I, you know, and you just made a great argument for why I'm in favor of adding South Florida into the future big 12. If they go to 16, because then yep. you create that beautiful base in that Orlando, Tampa, St. Be- beach corridor where, or, or St. Petersburg corridor where you, just have so much talent in that central to North Florida area that ends up going to schools that are probably viewed lesser than some big 12 schools, but they're out there, man. And if you can just go pick one there. or two out a year, RJ Garcia might be the best recruit in the 2021 class played his first game on Saturday, at Kansas got one catch. Didn't do a ton. I think he had only one catch. Uh, didn't do a ton in the course of the game, but, um, really did, uh, you know, that really did enough to let you know, oh, yeah, this kid's got something. He's got here. something. He's got, there's something right. here. And if you can go pluck a couple of guys a year out of that area of Florida to come to Kansas State because they know they get to go back and play at home, it's just huge. It's just 
it it would be yep. so good for the conference if they added a really nice base there in Central Florida. Absolutely. Absolutely. I know everybody says Florida, 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 and people get tired of hearing about it, but you know what? They play really good high school football in Florida. They just do. And right now is the time to literally go pluck them because Florida is down. Yeah. Florida state is awful. Miami is, they're about to fire their coach again. This is the time that you go at central Florida who everybody thought was going to be good. It has kind of settled back down, you know, a little bit. This is the time to go get those kids out of there because as much as they say, well, I want to play at home, a lot of kids want to go win too. Yeah. So if you can go get them, go get them. This is literally the time to get your base in there. That's that's a really good point. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up with one question that was asked of us on our questions podcast last week, and I thought it was a brilliant question. And now that K-State is indeed back to, um, you know, 500 in the conference, six and three overall, seemingly with their feet under them. This is a very tangible question. Brian Hanley, what's more, um, what's the greater chance of happening? K State ends the season six and six or nine and three? Nah, nine and three. Nine and three. I'm not saying that they'll definitely do no, that. No. Although I did have a hot take at the beginning of the season and said they would. So hopefully they can make me a profit. <laughs> but. <laughs> but I think they are closer to going nine and three than six and six. I, I just have a hard time believing we're going to lose the last three games. You know, and, and I, I have a hard time believing we're going to lose two out of the next three. I just don't believe because Texas has quit. So that's a win. You know, I, I shouldn't say that's a win, but you know what I mean? The, the Texas has quit. You it's saw that. They, yeah. Yeah. They, they have quit. Um, and then the two games at home. So if we can knock those out, we're sitting in good shape. I mean, so I think closer to going nine and three than six and six for sure. For sure. Yeah. My Sunday daily delivery was, uh, you know, of the things I discuss surprise when you woke up on Sunday, K state was alone in fifth place in the big 12 conference. So they're in the upper half of the conference already before having played West Virginia and Baylor, two teams that are very comparable. So uh, a lot's on the table. I will be intrigued to see how Chris Kleiman's team responds, but I think now with these three wins, they truly believe in themselves and now they just have to go take care of business against some good teams. We will see. Absolutely. Looking forward to it, too. Yeah. That's a really looking forward to it. Well, we appreciate you listening to the Power Cat Post Game Review Podcast brought to you by Caddyshack Golf. I am Tim Fitzgerald. Make sure you listen to all of our podcasts throughout the week, including dropping on Thursday will be our pregame podcast as we get you prepared for the Cats and Mountaineers. Saturday, 11 a.m. at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. The game is again on FS1. And Brian will join us for the pregame podcast along with some of the other the crew is we get you all up to date on the cats mr hanley thank you very much a job well done once again thank you i appreciate it and that's it for this podcast we will talk to go power cat make sure you check out all of our content and if you're not subscribing to go power cat and you're a k-state fan what are you thinking thank you for listening to the power cat podcast Make sure you're subscribing to our show at Apple, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you get your podcasts. PowerCat Podcast. All rights reserved. GoPowerCat.com. With Blue Link Plus, you can access your Hyundai Tucson Limited remotely. Doors unlocked. Temperature set. Lost car found. Get complimentary class-leading Blue Link Plus. Call 562-314-4603 for complete details.